I lost my son, essentially. Uh, so, you know, they, uh, they call it dead naming for a reason. Yeah, I... All right, I'm, so they, the reason it's called dead naming is because uh, your son is dead. So my son Xavier is dead. Killed by the woke mind virus. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. I can't imagine what that would be like. Yeah. All right, so let's... So I vowed to destroy the, mind, the woke mind virus after that. That was Elon Musk, world's richest man and apparently the world's worst parent, claiming that his trans daughter is dead because of the woke mind virus. But that's just not true. His child is very much alive, thankfully, but since he can't accept that she's trans, he's choosing to pretend like she's dead because that's somehow easier for him to accept than her being trans, which says a lot about his morality. Listen, any parent who'd rather pretend like their child is dead instead of just accepting them for who they are, they're not just a bad parent, they're a bad person. It just speaks to who you are as an individual. He is a terrible human being. Most parents love their children unconditionally, I'd like to think. Maybe they don't always understand or approve of their child's actions, but they still love them because that's kind of the whole point of unconditional love, which is expected from parents. But Elon Musk is saying, actually, there are conditions. If you're trans, I don't love you anymore. You're dead to me. That is so morally reprehensible that even looking at him grosses me out. What a terrible person. Now, I'd say that he should be ashamed of himself, but this man is incapable of feeling shame. Now, listen, to be fair to him, I do understand that he feels hurt because he no longer has a relationship with his daughter. But whose fault is that? That's his fault. He is dead naming and misgendering her in front of millions of people. He refuses to respect and accept her for who she is, and he's wondering why they no longer have a relationship. Hmm, put two and two together, Elon, and maybe you'll figure it out. Now, ask yourself this question. Would you want anything to do with your parent if they treated you this way? I know I sure the fuck wouldn't. But we're now learning that him rejecting his trans child and subsequent anger over what he thought was her being indoctrinated by the woke mind virus is kind of what put him on this far right trajectory that he's currently on. And that's what ultimately culminated in him buying Twitter. The Advocate explains, quote, Vivian Wilson, 20, is one of six children five living Musk had with his first wife, model Justine Wilson. She filed a petition in Los Angeles County Superior Court in April of 2022 to legally change her name and gender, citing the reason as gender identity and the fact that I no longer live with or wish to be related to my biological father in any way, shape, or form. Justine Wilson said shortly after Vivian came out that she was very proud of her. In recounting a conversation they had about her daughter's journey, she quoted Vivian as saying, I had a weird childhood. I can't believe I'm as normal seeming as I am. When Justine said, I'm very proud of you, she reportedly replied, I'm proud of myself. So you have this young woman who is genuinely happy and proud of herself, but Elon Musk is attacking her. And he thinks that his daughter was tricked. And because of his rejection and cognitive dissonance, he bought Twitter to try to stop the woke mind virus. He's changed his political views to take on the big trans menace. And it's just, it's gross. You know, he is dead naming her and misgendering her. And he doesn't even understand why that would be hurtful to her. He's just thinking about himself. Now, he's implying in that interview that she's not actually trans. He thinks that the wokesters, I guess, tricked her into thinking that she's trans. And on top of that, it's been reported that he also thinks that the wokesters tricked her into being communist and hating rich people like him. And that's why he thinks she hates him. Now, I don't know anything about the personal dynamic between the two of them, but I would assume that the fact that he's publicly dead naming and misgendering her probably has something to do with the fact that they no longer have a relationship. If he's this cruel to her publicly, I don't want to know what he said to her privately. I bet it was a lot more fucked up. Now, he doesn't just think that his daughter was indoctrinated or tricked into being trans. He also claims that he was tricked as well. So before he made that comment that we saw in the previous clip, he talked about why he's so transphobic currently, and it all stems from this belief that he was lied to about was what was best for his child. Why are you willing to make this an issue? Do you think? Uh, I mean, well, it's, it, it's sort it, of it like the name of my, issue. It happened to one of my my older boys, um, uh, where I was, um, 
I was essentially tricked into uh, signing documents uh, for one of my older boys, Xavier. Uh, this was before I had really any understanding of what was going on, and we had COVID going on, and so uh, there was a lot of confusion. Um, and um, you know, I was told, oh, he, you know, Xavier might commit suicide if if he. That was a that was a lie right from the outset. No reliable clinician ever believed that. There was never any evidence for that. And also, if there's a higher suicide rate, the reason is is because of the underlying depression and anxiety, and not because of the gender dysphoria. And every right. goddamn clinician knows that too. And they're too cowardly to come out and say it, right? And so that, and then we end up in exactly, when, when I saw that lie start to propagate, it just made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. It's like, I see. So you're, you're telling parents that unless they agree to this radical transformation that their children are going to die, and you think that's moral, and you think that's true. That's so pat, that is so pathological that it's almost incomprehensible. I can't imagine anything worse of, I can't imagine a therapist doing anything worse than that or sitting by idly and remaining silent while his colleagues are doing it. It's pathetic. Uh, it's it's uh, incredibly evil. And I agree with you that the people that have been promoting this should go to prison. Uh, I, it won't stop till that happens. Yeah. It'll just go underground. There's all, puberty blockers are being accessed online by kids all the time through non-medical channels. So yeah, right. it's not gonna stop. Yeah. Okay, so I see. So that's so the I was connection. I was tricked into doing this, um, and uh, you know, it wasn't explained to me that puberty blockers are actually just sterilization drugs. Okay, so there's a lot there, but first of all, wanting to jail doctors that provide medically necessary and life saving gender affirming healthcare is overtly fascistic. These decisions are made between medical professionals, parents, and the child. And like all medical treatments, of course, there is risk. But the pros and the cons are weighed out by the parents who are able to make an informed decision that's best for their family. If a child had a cancerous brain tumor, for example, the procedure to remove that would be very, very serious. It'd be life-threatening, potentially, and could pose long-term cognitive damage for that child. Nobody thinks that it would be appropriate in that scenario for the government to step in and say, actually, that's too risky and the doctor should be jailed for offering that procedure since it's so risky. That would be insane. But for some reason, when it comes to this medical issue, when it comes to gender affirming care, Elon Musk thinks that a blanket decision, a one size fits all approach, that's how it should be. The government should impose what they think is appropriate, disregard the evidence. Now, it's not surprising because conservatives have that same exact mentality towards reproductive health care and IVF. But, but when it comes to Elon Musk, he clearly has deluded himself into thinking that he was begrudgingly goaded into signing documents and feels like he was gaslit by a doctor into making his child trans. And he doesn't think that his child was trans. Now, he shares more about this on Twitter, saying, Dead name was born gay and slightly autistic, two attributes that contribute to gender dysphoria. I knew that from when he was about four years old, and he would pick out clothes for me to wear, like a jacket, and tell me it was fabulous, as well as his love of musicals and theater. But he was not a girl. Notice again, he's misgendering his daughter. So he just assumes that he had a gay son and not a trans daughter. But I think that his daughter would know better than him. Just because she said the word fabulous doesn't automatically mean that she's gay. And this talking point here that he's using is pretty common among transphobes like Elon Musk and J.K. Rowling. It's this idea that children are being misdiagnosed with gender dysphoria when they're really just gay. But that's not how it works. Orientation and gender identity are two completely different things. They are related to an extent but they're different things. For example, like I was a pretty flamboyant kid myself, and it was pretty obvious by the time I was like three or four that I was queer as a $3 bill. But nobody could have convinced me that I was a trans girl because I'm cis. In fact, I remember being really upset when kids would point out how effeminate I was. One in particular said that I acted like a girl and that hurt my feelings because I did not want to be a girl. I wanted to be a boy, right? You couldn't have convinced me that I was a girl because that's not innate in me. Queer people know who they are. Trans people know who they are. Elon Musk's daughter isn't hopping on a bandwagon. She transitioned because she's trans. She knows who she is. Now, there's another curious component to Musk's story. So he's seemingly lying about at least some of the details of him being tricked by the doctor because as Julie Ray points out, 
Vivian would have been 16 years old when she began gender affirming care. At that age, puberty blockers are useless. She would have begun HRT at that age. Also, she's very much alive. She just wants nothing to do with her abusive parent. Same as so many kids with gender critical and turf parents nowadays. Now, it's possible that he's confusing puberty blockers with hormone replacement therapy. HRT can also make it more difficult to have children, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's just being purposefully hyperbolic to scare parents with younger kids who may qualify for puberty blockers, right? But let's talk about this notion that he was tricked into signing documents and was fearful that if he didn't support gender affirming care for his daughter, she might commit suicide. Now, Jordan Peterson incorrectly and stupidly claims that it's a lie to say that trans and non-binary youth are more susceptible to depression and suicidal ideation. And if they are suicidal, well, it's not because of gender dysphoria. It's because of pre-existing underlying mental health issues. Now, he is completely wrong, and the opposite of what he's saying is true. This is according to not me, but experts and data. So a meta-analysis from the Trevor Project explains that gender-affirming care, along with other factors, including family support, have been proven to reduce suicidal ideation. And let's just go over some of the findings from the studies that they cite. Transgender and non-binary children who socially transition, we're talking about a new name, new pronouns, and perhaps different clothing, uh, they have similar levels of self-worth as cis children, although they do have slightly higher levels of anxiety, which probably stems from the fear that their peers will treat them differently or perhaps be mean to them. Furthermore, suicidal ideation decreases when their gender identity is respected. Moving on, when it comes to medical transitions, trans youth on puberty blockers see decreased emotional and behavioral problems as well as suicidal ideation. And when it comes to hormone replacement therapy, not only does that reduce suicidal ideation, it improves body image and overall confidence. Now, that is extremely important because 50% of trans and non-binary youth have considered suicide according to a 2023 survey of 34,000 queer young people published by the Trevor Project. In other words, we're looking at a crisis situation here, which is why the experts, not the ideologues, mind you, insist that gender-affirming healthcare is medically necessary and life-saving, because it is. It is literally a matter of life and death. Taking this away from children, could lead to them committing suicide or engaging in self-harm, which is why doctors are obligated to tell parents about this because they wouldn't know that automatically, right? Most people don't know about this. So them telling you that is for the safety of your child, Elon Musk. But yet he's spreading misinformation along with Jordan Peterson because they're bitter and transphobic. They don't actually care about their children or trans people, and that's just despicable. And they are treating this as if it's some, you know, fad or anyone who comes out as trans, they've been infected by the woke mind virus, whatever the fuck that means. But being trans is a beautiful thing. It's a part of life. It's a part of humanity. Trans people have always existed and they will always exist. And when a trans person comes out and accepts themselves and chooses to be themselves, that is a beautiful thing that should be celebrated. It is a radical act of self-love that should be commended. And when a trans person in particular comes out to you or their family members, that's the ultimate compliment because they're inviting you to be part of their lives. They're asking you if you want to celebrate their lives with them. They want to be here. You should be grateful. But to Elon Musk, he'd rather tell himself that his child is dead than trans and happy. He is truly a disgusting piece of shit, but unfortunately, his daughter's experience isn't unique. Trans people are rejected by their families all the time. And it's just heartbreaking. So I think that as cis people, we have to step up. If you know a trans person who's been rejected, you can be their new family. You can be their uncle. You can be their new father who walks them down the aisle since their biological father won't. You can be their mother who gives them a hug since their biological parents won't. So if you are trans or non-binary and you're watching this and you've been rejected by your family, fuck them. I accept you. I'm sure there's a lot of people down below in the comment section who is going to accept you. And countless others wouldn't just be happy to have you in their lives. They would be lucky to have you as part of their lives. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, F around and find out. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, gay pride. Trans rights are human rights. It is necessary to push trans on the kid. 
Gabe, 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 Gabe,